This tutorial series will take you from a complete beginner to an advanced level user of Studio One, a zero tier guide if you will. This fifth video is all about audio editing. I'll show you most of the different ways you can edit audio in Studio One with lots of keyboard shortcuts to make you super efficient. As always, I'll add some bonus tips at the end of the video. That's going to include some settings that you might want to change. Please like the video if you like the video, subscribe for more content, check out the links in the description. And finally, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments. Audio editing is the manipulation of an audio recording or sample. In modern music production, audio editing is performed using a DAW or digital audio workstation software, such as Studio One. It's normally completed before the final mixing and mastering stage of a song, and can be used creatively to add flair, correctively to fix problems in a recording, or it can be used to improve or enhance the quality of a sound within a full mix. I'll start with the most basic functions. Here we have an audio sample. Click and drag with the arrow tool to move it around the timeline. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V to copy and paste the selected event to where the playhead is. You can also hold Alt and click and drag an event to copy and paste. To duplicate the selected event, press D on the keyboard. Drag the edges of an event to crop it. With the range tool, double click on an event to split it. If you draw a range then double click, the event will be split at both the start and end point of the range. Press tab to move the playhead to the beginning of the next transient. A transient is the initial attack phase of a sound. This feature, known as Tab to Transient, is particularly useful for chopping up drum or percussion loops. To split the event at the playhead, use the keyboard shortcut Alt-X. Hold Ctrl and Alt, then click and drag to slip edit. This keeps the same start and end points on the timeline, but shifts the audio along. Click on this symbol to enable Ripple Edit. With Ripple Edit disabled, when I move an event or delete it, everything else stays in the same position. With it enabled, when I delete an event or a section of audio, everything to the right of it is shifted over. Moving an event over another will cause them to be reordered. To increase or decrease the gain or volume of an event, drag the square up or down. To add a fade in or fade out in volume, click and drag these triangles in the top corner of the event. Then drag this square to change the shape of the curve. Hold Ctrl and click on any of these points to reset them individually. Hold Ctrl and Shift then click to reset them all at once. Right click an audio clip and tick the box next to gain envelope. Now we can draw in clip gain automation. Notice how the waveform updates to show the changes in volume. To normalise the event, right click and select Normalise under the audio menu, or use the keyboard shortcut Alt and N. When you normalise audio, the door automatically adjusts the volume of the entire clip so that the loudest peak is zero decibels. In this menu, you can also reverse the audio. The keyboard shortcut for this is Ctrl R. You can create auto fades, which gives you a short fade in and fade out. This is useful for removing unwanted clicks caused by the sample starting or ending not on the waveform's zero crossing point. The keyboard shortcut for this is Shift X. And you can create crossfades between two clips of audio with the keyboard shortcut X. Mute or unmute an event by right clicking and selecting toggle mute under the event menu, or by pressing shift M. To change or transpose the pitch of an audio sample, open up the inspector by clicking this I symbol, or by using the keyboard shortcut F4. There's three sections in the inspector, you might need to resize things to see the bottom section. 
To alter the pitch by semitones, change the value next to transpose. To fine tune the pitch in sense, change the tune value. To edit an audio clip using Melodyne, right click and select Edit with Melodyne, or use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl and M. To time stretch a whole event, hold Alt and click and drag from the edge of the event. You can change the time stretch algorithm here in the inspector. You can also time stretch audio within an event using the Bend Marker View and Bend Tool. For more information on this, check out my video on the toolbar. For the bonus tips, I've got an example here, so I'm just going to press play. I want to edit this drum break to add a fill on the last bar of the loop. Now there's a few settings that I can change to help me do that more efficiently. Let's say I want to take this snare and move it along to here. See how that's now greyed out and when I press play, the snare doesn't play. That's because this sample is over the other one. So we'd have to resize it here. A quicker way to do that is if we click on the wrench icon on the top left, it'll bring up some options. The one I want to enable is no overlap when editing events here. Now, when I take that snare and move it across, it deletes what's underneath it. The second setting that I want to look at is, again, you can see it in the options, is cursor follows edit position. You can also change that one here with this symbol. What that does, and I quite like having it on most of the time, what that does is it moves the cursor or playhead to the start of whatever event you select. In this instance, I'm going to turn it off and I'll show you why in a second. The third setting that I'm going to change is return to start on stop. And you can get to that by right clicking down here in the transport controls anywhere down here. And just click return to start and stop. As you can see, there's also the keyboard shortcut alt and zero on the numpad if you have a numpad. So with that on, it's pretty self-explanatory when you press play and then stop the playhead moves back to where you started playback. So that's going to be useful because we want to listen to just this last bar. And the reason why I turned this off is because when I'm editing, so let's say I want to take this kick drum and put it, copy it across to there. Now the cursor's moved to there, but I want to listen from the start of the bar. Put that there. I think I'm going to move this snare across. See how now the cursor stays where it is, so I can just audition it after making an edit. So let's just duplicate that with D. And all together. So that's just about everything you need to know about audio editing in Studio One. If you want more Studio One tutorials, then check out this playlist. And if you want to see me actually making music in Studio One, then check out this playlist. Subscribe, share tips, keep doing things you love. Studio One gang, sound.